So welcome to another five minutes with Cyril episode and I want to talk about the PhD defense here. How can you make sure that your PhD defense is a great event? And your, the presentation of your defense is one central element in this. So a PhD defense talk is typically something that lasts for around 30 minutes, is given in front of um, a PhD committee, often public or general audience is allowed for that, maybe family members are around, and you are presenting your work, the thing you have done the last four or five years. So you want to defend your work, you want to get your degree, and you want to shine and make sure you don't, um, whatever, um, make your supervisor feel bad about what you're presenting because your show is not great. So you want to do a good job and make people proud of you. And thus, this can be a very scary thing. There are experts in the room, your PhD committee, and they decide yes or no about your thesis later on. So you do want to do a good job. So first of all, there is a PhD committee. And they are people which are experts from the field. However, you have been working on this topic for five years, so you should be the better expert than they are because you put so much time into this. So don't be too scared about them. Second thing is, what is what the committee wants to figure out? There are typically four things that your PhD committee wants to figure out or puts focus on. The first thing is, is the research which is presented here actually novel or is this known old stuff? So make sure you highlight what's novel. Second thing is, they want to know how did you push the state of the art forward? What is your contribution in order to make something better or gaining new knowledge? What is this what you have done? This is something you need to be very explicit about. Third, your committee members typically want to see that this is a person who is able to discuss work, defend work and present it well. Because scientific interactions is about discussing and defending work and they want to see that you are able to actually do this. And last but not least, you're kind of becoming a member of the people with a PhD degree. So it's kind of an entry exam to a certain cycle. Maybe it sounds a bit stupid, but to some degree it is like this. So people want to see whom they admit to this circle. So this is kind of the motivation of your committee. So what can you do in order to address this? The first thing is, it's always good to start with answering the question, what's possible right now through my thesis, which was impossible before? If you can make this point very clear, you won already because it showed that you pushed the state of the art forward, you made own contributions and enabled something which was impossible before. For that, you typically need to at least very briefly explain your starting point to make sure we are all on track and then show how you extended this. What have you made possible which was not possible before? Something which works really well. Also be very explicit about your key contributions. What yours, what has been done by others, just to avoid any confusion here. Be very explicit about which part of the work you're presenting you're claiming as your own contribution. You don't want to let the audience or the committee guess what, you, what the, your contribution could be. Be very explicit about it. Also, you should back up all your claims. Whatever you claim should be supported through an experiment or through a proof. In my field, these are often experiments where you test your algorithm against another algorithm, for example. But the thesis is also your time to shine. You want to present your coolest result, the stuff which is well backed up, but also something which enables something, which makes you look good, that your ideas have been great. So it's also to some degree a bit of a show. So don't be too defensive in your PhD defense. And another very important point is explain things for people outside your field. You think your PhD committee are all experts, but they are for sure not. At least two members of your committee are typically far away or further away from what you're doing. Maybe they're the same subject, maybe you have one person in your committee which is even from a different subject and you don't want to lose this person. At least make sure the person understands the problem and gets a glimpse of what your solution looks like. So being able to present for people outside your field is super important to not lose the people right from your first slide on. And if a PhD presentation fails, it's from my point of view, often because people are too narrow, too focused, and just address one person in the committee. And if you just address one person and lose the other three or four, that's really, really bad. Last but not least, you present all your stuff and then you come to the end of your presentation. And your last slide should summarize your key contributions. Because this is one of the key things. What are the key things you're proud of that you enable doing? What is your contribution? Where you claim your own contribution for? Put that on your last slide. 
You may want to also summarize whatever papers you've written or some highlight papers if you want to. You don't have to. Just to emphasize that also other people basically reviewed your work and said that it's good stuff. You can do that. You don't have to do that. But this is how I would end my presentation. And very, very important for defense, stick with the timing. When the time is over, you must be on your last slide as a golden rule. So maybe you have one minute more. If your time frame is 30, 30 minutes, after 30 mi one minutes, you should be completely done. When the clock turns to 30 minutes, you must be on your conclusion slides. People will see this as really negative if you go whatever 10% over time, because every student has the same amount of time. So stick with these rules.